Have you ever wondered what determines the outcome of a conflict or war? This question paves our way into the profound wisdom of Sun Tzu's classic, The Art of War. This ancient Chinese military treatise delineates five constant factors that play a pivotal role in any strategic deliberation related to warfare or conflict. Firstly, we have the moral law. This factor brings into play the ethical and moral aspects of warfare. It underscores the importance of legitimacy, righteousness, justice, and public opinion in the conduct of war. A cause that aligns with the moral law is more likely to garner support and bolster morale. Secondly, Sun Tzu introduces heaven as a factor. Here, heaven signifies the natural and environmental conditions that affect the battlefield. Weather, terrain and other environmental elements can greatly influence the outcome of battles. An astute understanding of these conditions could be a game-changer. The third factor, Earth, represents the physical and geographical elements of the battlefield. Terrain, geography and battlefield layout are all under its umbrella. Victory often hinges on adapting strategies according to these earthy characteristics. The fourth factor, the commander, zeroes in on the qualities and capabilities of the leader. Leadership, intelligence, decisiveness, and adaptability are all key to overcoming the challenges that arise on the battlefield. Lastly, Sun Tzu's fifth factor, method and discipline, pertains to the strategies, tactics, and organization of the military forces. Discipline training, efficient organization and strategic flexibility are essential to success. Now let's dive deeper into each of these factors and their importance in warfare. First up, we have the moral law. As we delve into Sun Tzu's art of war, it's crucial to understand that the moral law isn't about religious or spiritual morality. Rather, it's a concept that encompasses the ethical and moral aspects of warfare. It's about legitimacy, righteousness, justice, and public opinion. It's about the rightness of one's cause. Let's think about it. When people believe in the cause they're fighting for, they're more likely to fight passionately, aren't they? That's exactly what the moral law is about. It's about ensuring that the cause is just, the conduct is ethical, and the public opinion is favorable. This isn't just an abstract concept. It can directly impact the morale of the troops and the support from allies and the public. So the moral law isn't about convenience or expediency. It's about righteousness and legitimacy. The moral law is about doing what's right, not just about what's expedient. Next, we explore the influence of heaven and earth. Let's start with heaven. In Sun Tzu's context, heaven doesn't refer to a divine realm, but the natural environment that shapes the battlefield. It's about understanding the rhythm of seasons, the capriciousness of weather, and the pattern of day and night. It's about knowing when the winter's chill will freeze the rivers, or when the summer's heat will turn the plains into dust bowls. It's about predicting a foggy morning that could cloak an attack or a stormy night that could disrupt enemy lines. These environmental elements, as unpredictable as they may be, can be harnessed to one's advantage, turning nature into an ally. Now let's dive into Earth. In the art of war, Earth doesn't represent our planet as a whole, but the physical and geographical features of the battlefield. It's about knowing the lay of the land, the undulating hills, the treacherous cliffs, the dense forests, and the wide rivers. It's about understanding the strategic significance of high grounds, the potential ambush points in narrow passes, or the advantages of a fortified position. The Earth, with its diverse terrain, can either be a formidable barrier or an advantageous vantage point, depending on how well it is understood and utilized. For instance, imagine a force attempting to cross a mountain range. Without understanding the heaven, they might choose a day with heavy snowfall, making the passage nearly impossible. Without understanding the earth, they might select a route fraught with perilous cliffs and rock slides, but with a keen understanding of both factors, they could choose a clear day and a safe pass, ensuring a successful crossing. So you see, these two factors, heaven and earth, are not just about understanding the environment, they're about turning that understanding into strategic advantage, they're about making informed decisions that can mean the difference between victory and defeat, between survival and annihilation. A keen understanding of heaven and earth can turn the tide of war. Now let's take a look at the role of the commander. Sun Tzu placed immense importance on the qualities and capabilities of the individual leading the military operations. He believed that the qualities of leadership, intelligence, decisiveness and adaptability were crucial in a commander. 
A leader with these qualities can inspire troops, exploit opportunities, and overcome challenges on the battlefield. Imagine a commander who is intelligent and decisive. They can quickly assess the situation, make informed decisions, and act swiftly. This can be the difference between victory and defeat. A commander who is adaptable can adjust strategies and tactics based on changing circumstances. They can turn unfavorable conditions into opportunities for success. And let's not forget about inspiring leadership. A commander who can motivate and inspire their troops can boost morale, improve performance, and build a cohesive and dedicated force. Such a leader can harness the collective strength of their troops to achieve victory. In the heat of battle, the commander's qualities can make all the difference. Finally, we delve into method and discipline. Now these are not just buzzwords Sun Tzu threw around, they are the backbone of an effective military force. Let's start with discipline training. Sun Tzu believed that every soldier from the lowest rank to the highest should be well trained and disciplined. This goes beyond just knowing how to hold a sword or shoot an arrow. It's about understanding the chain of command, knowing how to respond in different situations, and being ready to adapt at a moment's notice. It's about transforming an individual into a piece of a larger, cohesive unit. Now, onto efficient organization. This is where the commander's role comes into sharper focus. A well-organized army can move swiftly, respond effectively, and maintain morale even in the face of adversity. It's about ensuring that every cog in the military machine is well-oiled and functioning optimally. Last, but certainly not least, we have strategic flexibility. This is the ability to switch tactics, change plans, and adapt to the ever-changing conditions on the battlefield. It's about not being rigid or bound by a single plan. Remember in war, the only constant is change. So whether it's a well-trained soldier, a well-oiled army, or a flexible strategy, it all boils down to one thing, method and discipline. It's the glue that holds everything together, the keystone of any successful military operation. Discipline and method when used effectively can pave the way to victory. So we've journeyed through the five constant factors of warfare. We dove deep into Sun Tzu's wisdom, starting with the moral law, which underscores the ethical and moral aspects of warfare, emphasizing the importance of righteousness and public support. Then, we explored heaven, the natural and environmental conditions that influence the battlefield, and earth the physical and geographical elements that can dictate the course of conflict. We also examine the role of the commander, whose qualities and capabilities are paramount. Intelligence, decisiveness, and adaptability in a leader can inspire troops and turn the tide of battle. Lastly, we touched upon method and discipline, highlighting the significance of strategic flexibility, disciplined training, and efficient organization. These five factors, when balanced and considered carefully, Equip commanders with the tools to make informed decisions and craft effective strategies. Remember, victory in battle is not just about force, it's about strategy. For more insights into the art of war, follow our channel, click like, and turn on notifications. Stay tuned for more.